If you're having one of those moments in life where you're just like, who am I and why am I here? Or why is this not working out in the way that I thought? What is it that I'm showing up for? Why why did I come here? I know it's for a good reason. I know it's for a cause. I know it's for a greater purpose. And and I'm ready. I, I'm willing. I, I'm hungry even. And, and at the same time, where do I go from here? How can I get into a space where I step into a more meaningful, purposeful journey? And sometimes when we're really feeling that overwhelm or that disconnect or that total lack of understanding of why we're here and who we are, we need to take a step back, take a breath, be in silence, and let me take it from here. So let's continue to stay in this notion of silence, this moment to pause, this understanding that you don't have to be everything for everyone in every moment, that you have to have all of the answers. Sometimes the beauty of life is to be the questioner, to be curious. More often than not, it is when we are curious versus having all the answers, that we actually feel more satisfied in the long run, that we're actually in a space where we're more knowing, where we actually can identify with who we are and what we want and where we're going, as opposed to someone spoon feeding you answers. We think so often that we want the universe to just tell us what to do. But at the end of the day, what's the fun in that? After a while, it kind of gets old, we get bored, we get resentful, we get passive aggressive, we start to say, well, this isn't what I want to do. But the universe said, hey, friend, darling, babe, you said you wanted me to give you something to do, so I did. You said that you wanted some answers as to how you could show up, so I gave you some. However, if you really want it to get juicy, if you really want to spice things up, let's do it together. Let's co-create. And that comes from you being curious, you being willing to be on an investigative journey, being the PI of your own life, and recognize that there is a divine design for your path. There are answers that are awaiting you. There are secrets and mysteries to your life that will soon be uncovered. But none of it is going to really mean something to you. None of it is going to really embody this notion of a journey unless you're willing to become the seeker, which I know that you are. I know that you're available for this path. I know that you don't need it to be linear. I see you in that opportunity comes from looking at things from a layered perspective of taking moments to pause and other moments to play and other ones to take action. And what if that became the formula for your life going forward? As this year continues to expand and accelerate, to not feel at the mercy of being left behind or it's going too fast and I don't know what to do, but more so recognizing and understanding that when time accelerates, that's actually the universe, the world showing you that I got you. I'm speeding things along so that we can get you to where you need to be. I am moving things forward at an accelerated pace so that the answers can find you faster. As opposed to, oh my God, it's going too fast. I'm behind. I don't know what to do. I'm floundering. Oh my God, another month went by. We're not playing that game. We're we're recognizing, we're understanding that, yes, the times that we're in are moving quickly. And that is because we have access to technology. It is because literally things are picking up. The dynamics and energetics of a day are changing. However, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. That doesn't mean that it's not working out for you. What if 
life picking up, having access to more resources and technology is actually allowing you to be in a space where you get what you need faster so long as you're willing to go for the ride and inquire where it's taking you and be okay if it takes you another direction. I feel like right now we're in a space where a lot of different paths could unfold for you. And so trying to figure out what the one path to take would be limiting and recognizing that the end goal is always going to be the end goal, but the path to get you there can be different because once again, we want things to be different than they have to be different. And also if you're willing to go on the journey, then be willing to take a different route. I don't know about you, but I get bored doing the same route. I mean, clearly you probably know this about me because how many times do I freaking move? And I think it's because I sometimes outgrow my environments because my environments have deceased the multitude of pathways to stimulate me and ignite me into understanding what's forward. And that's not for everybody, right? There's a, there's also a beauty in finding a safe haven to land, to having a place where you can feel grounded, where you can feel connected, where you can have a home. And then within that framework of a home, accelerate, right? Some people do it. I, I tend to do it the other way around. I want to be outside the home and on the journey. And some people need to be in the home on the journey, right? It's, 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 it's your call. And that's the beautiful thing. You have to realize that you don't have to know everything all at once, that you don't have to have all the answers right now, that you don't have to spread yourself so freaking thin to try to figure it out. Oh, well, let me go over here. And then let me go over there. And then let me go do this. And let me go do that. That's in any area of your life especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to create or grow a business, but even in your job that you show up for, your family, your body, your health, where are you spreading yourself too thin? And how is that denying you access to the answers that you're seeking when it comes to your life? And once again, how can we trust that the accelerated momentum that we may be feeling around the world. Oh my gosh, so much is happening. So much is developing. It's happening so fast. Things just keep changing over and over and over again. Great. That gives me permission to just be present and see what today has available for me and understand that as things speed up, so does the clarification of what I'm looking for. Cool. And in the meantime, I won't try to be everywhere all at once. I won't try to do the job of the universe. I won't spread myself too thin because what does that do? When we spread ourselves too thin, when we think that we have to be in everything, that our foot has to be in every door, we are actually saying, I don't believe in my purposeful, personal power. A lot of times we give our power away because we think it's going to give us something in return. Or a lot of times we act in certain ways because we think that that will get us love and validation. Oh, this person interprets me as this way, so I'll keep showing up in this way, even though I've outgrown this way, or I'm not actually this way, or I don't really care to be this way, or I actually want them to see me in this light. When we abandon ourselves to try to configurate ourselves into what we believe someone sees us as, we diminish our power. And we're giving so much more than we should be. When we say yes to circumstances that don't serve us, we are exuding more power that actually isn't available. We actually go into debt. You are saying, yes, I have the resources to say yes to this when actually you don't. And so you go into energetic debt and then you get burnt out. You get sick. You aren't able to show up for the things that you want to do. You burn away the space and the capacity to actually be in the experience of what it is that you love and what it is that you want to explore because you're riding out somebody else's journey. And look, there's a time and a place. Sometimes we do need to say yes. Sometimes we do have to kind of like buck up and do the thing. Sometimes we got to, you know, ride a certain wave because it's the responsible thing to do at the time or it's the secure thing. But you know that. And there's a plan beyond that. Right. There's a, it's like, I am saying yes. And this is the plan going forward so that I don't have to keep saying yes. That's the caveat. And that's you keeping your power, right? Cause you're like, I'm using my discernment to understand, okay, maybe I do have to say yes. Maybe I committed to something that maybe wasn't the right move for me. Maybe I, I said yes out of fear. Maybe I committed to this cause I thought it was going to give me what I was looking for. I'm recognizing it's not, I can't get out of it. That's okay. But how will I make sure to get out of it in the future? Or how do I make sure to break this pattern going forward? 
We have to really be the investigator here. Start looking at yourself as the observer. Start looking at yourself as someone that you hired to investigate why your life isn't going the way that you want. Why you're not getting the love and the acceptance that you're craving. And where are you denying it yourself? Where are you giving away so much power that you don't have the power or the wherewithal, the bandwidth to give back to you? And then again, we become depleted and we're tired. And then we start scrolling because we're bored and we're too tired to do anything because we gave all of our energy to everybody else. And now we're absorbing everybody else living their best life and giving us advice and doing the things that you're like, I could be doing that. But I'm too busy giving myself to everybody else. And I'm too afraid to make the space for me. Going forward, you are not afraid of taking up space for yourself. You recognize and you understand that you are meant to show up for you, that you're meant to choose you. I choose me. And as I choose me, that expands my life. That opens up possibility. That allows magnetism and to be able to attract the people, places, circumstances in my life that I fully desire. The way to be a giver starts with you. The way to be in community is through your own self-care. You take care of yourself so you can take care of us. And you don't have to spread yourself too thin in the process. You know, this life, this journey, especially when we start to wake up, we are waking up to possibility. We are waking up to something new. We are waking up to something that we actually had never seen before in this life. You know, I remember when I had my big spiritual awakening, I was 26 years old and it was a wake up call that led me to my awakening. And there were a lot of things leading up to it that should have woke me up and it didn't. But then I had that aha moment. Then I had that recognition of I'm a spiritual being living out a human experience. I started to recognize a connection with something greater that I had been denying. And in some ways I knew it was always there. It was always a part of me. It was always available, but I didn't really understand it. I didn't really know it to be true. I didn't really recognize it as a reality in my life. And so the wake up is that we get to now move forward, not knowing. It's like we always know deep down and then we get to live our life in a way of uncertainty because we didn't come here fueled by prediction. Or again, what would be the point? If you could predict everything that was going to happen to you, where's the fun in that? Now, don't get me wrong. You can be the creator and the creator is feeding your life with information that you believe to be valuable to begin to manifest and move into a life that feels really in alignment. But we can't predict that per se, because anything you've ever manifested that has come together has been beautiful and, and, and all inspiring and, and even a little surprising. And also like, I knew this was going to happen, but it probably didn't happen a hundred percent the way that you predicted. So, waking up and recognizing I want to be on a spiritual journey. I want to be on a spiritual path. I want to live my life in co-creation with the universe is saying I release prediction. I release the need to have all the answers. And instead, as part of the co-creation, I'm going to feed the universe with what I'm excited about, what I want more of, what's feeling really good. And then coinciding with that, I'm going to recognize where I can prioritize myself. And I'm going to look to see where I'm still spreading myself too thin and giving my power to situations that are draining me. And I'm going to notice patterns and I'm going to work on it. For me, my patterns that I'm working on are in basically impulsivity and taking a step back when I want to be impulsive, when I want to just make it work. When I tell myself, Oh no, 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 you can do that. You can do that. It'll be fine. Oh, this is the last time. This is the last time. It's not a big deal. I'll just do it one more time. No, I I won't do it one more time. I'm done with doing things one more time. I'm done with chasing and trying to get things to work. And instead, I'm going to notice and I'm going to ask myself why. Why do you need this to work so bad? 
Why are you agreeing to do this one more time when you said you would never do it again? Why don't you believe that another way is possible? And I sit with those questions. Again, I go back to being curious. And then from that space of curiosity, I'm like, oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. I'm taking a breath. I'm taking a pause. I'm, I'm, go- I'm noticing. And I might need to lean back a little bit more and give it a little bit more space. And then I'm going to refine. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to say, actually, I can't. Actually, I'd prefer to, if we did it this way. Actually, let's move forward in this way. And that's how things begin to expand. That's how you feed your pathway. And that's how you, as we love to say, manifest. But it's about taking time to know not just what you want, but who are you in the role of the person that desires that. Many of you know I work in the space of AI a lot, or I I play with it and I use it behind the scenes. One of my goals is to be more front-facing with AI. One of the things I love about it is, of course, on the surface, yeah, it's a tool, time management. It will do the work for you. It will solve all your problems, blah, blah, blah. Well, once again, why? Why do you want it to save time for you? Why do you want it to write things for you? So if it does save you time, what are you doing with that time? Are you just scrolling on Instagram? Are you saying, I'm utilizing this to give myself freedom to continue to say yes to other circumstances and opportunities that light me up? Further, what I really like about utilizing AI is like when you go in to use it like a chat GPT, you can tell it what you want. I want you to do this. I need you to do this. I want, I want this to happen. I want you to tell me how to do this. I want you to make this my reality. That can be a little beggy, honestly, right? Like it's kind of like you're prompting, but it's like, are you prompting or are you begging? Like, let's, let's pick a lane here. Right. And then when we realize, Oh, I'm kind of being like a beggar here. Well, how do I, how do I turn that around? So I'm not begging this computer to do stuff for me. You're going to go to, this is what I want. And this is why I want it. Okay. That's the important part. The why is your truth. That's the key to all of this. This is why I want this. And when you can prompt the computer or you can prompt the universe with, this is what I want and this is why. And then we take it a step further and we say, it's because I am this. This is who I am. This is what I want. And this is why. If you can share from that space, then I'm telling you, AI will be truly your best friend. And so will the universe. And so will the world. And most importantly, so will you be to your own self. In order to be your own best ally is to trust what you want, recognize the why of why you want it, and then to look at yourself as the best possible match for that role. And that's how you get into a groove where you're feeling good about what it is that you're creating, how you're showing up, and you're doing what you love and ultimately doing things that serve us as a collective. Again, I don't care what you quote unquote put on your LinkedIn as a job title. How are you showing up for humanity? How are you showing up for us? Something to think about. And as you think about that, you have to go back and think about yourself. So again, I choose me. And as I choose me, I choose possibilities. I prioritize. I know that the world works in really beautiful, interesting, wild ways. I recognize that things are picking up at a faster pace, but that could serve me too. That could work in my favor. I can trust that everything's working out. I just have to ask the questions and I have to recognize and notice the moments where I've exerted too much of my power to other circumstances that don't feel in alignment anymore. I know that I have multiple pathways that are available to me. And I know that I can't go wrong so long as I feel really good about where I'm going. I trust that having a spiritual lifestyle means being in a dance with uncertainty. 
the universe, astrology, the stars, the gurus. They're not prediction machines, nor is AI. Well, AI, I guess a little bit. <laughs> it only can predict what we've told it. It doesn't predict the future. You can ask it to. And it's going to daydream right along with you. So if you're feeling like things aren't working out, if you're feeling confused, if you're feeling tired, if you're lacking clarity, I want you to ask yourself, what do I really want? Why do I really want it? And who am I to show up in this way? How will I be the person most ripe and aligned with this role? And then in turn, I'm just going to keep feeding that to the universe. I'm going to keep showing up every day and doing just a little something of what I love, a little something of what feels good, a little something that feels like it could have impact. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to get curious. I'm going to know how freaking taken care of I am in the process. And that's where things come together. And as things come together, they only get brighter, bigger, and more expansive. Please know you are so powerful. You are so here on purpose. And for whatever reason, we weren't truly taught how to navigate this journey. And so my hope is that this gives you some insight and some reassurance and relief to recognize and understand how and why you move on from here. I love you. You freaking got this. Let's keep going. If you are a fan of The Daniel Mercurio Show, which I kind of know that you are, then I have something really special that I just launched for you. It's my sister podcast, Unfiltered Universe of Danielle and Reagan. This podcast is a weekly series that is full of unedited content with one of my besties, Reagan Tilton. We talk about the stars, we talk about the sex, we talk about the travel, the rock and roll, the ins and outs of life, dropping little nuggets of wisdom, all in an unfiltered, transformational, beautiful, laugh out loud way. So make sure when you're done listening to this episode, you head on over and look for Unfiltered Universe of Danielle and Reagan. Listen to our pilot episode, rate it five stars, get us out there into the world.